<laughs> I I plan our route. <laughs> and the one time that you booked us an RV site, <laughs> we moved. It was the best site we ever <laughs> We moved. <laughs> we are Ryan in Venice. And along with our four children and two dogs, we are traveling around the country in a 300 square foot motorhome. We share how we work, homeschool, and play as we focus on faith, our family, and all the fun in between. We are the RV Adventure Family. Today we're going to be talking about how we plan our travels. Okay. Yep. Um, so one of the first questions is how do you plan your route? How do you plan our route? <laughs> I, I, I drive. That's how I plan our route. Just make sure I check the oil. I check the tires. You check, so, every, um, you check everything. You so I guess it. for me it's always the same process. <laughs> I I plan our route, <laughs> and the one time that you booked us an RV site, <laughs> we moved. It was the best site we ever. <laughs> we moved. <laughs> so. Oh yeah. We knew that we wanted in this first leg of the trip. <clears throat> we knew that we wanted to go to Yellowstone, so that's basically how we planned our trip was around Yellowstone availability, and we were very lucky to get. A campsite for our RV in Yellowstone for three consecutive days three or four three 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 consecutive days all over the weekend also so around that is when we planned our leaving date and our um, and the rest of our trip so yeah so essentially we have one main destination right and you can get, and I guess we should, you should clarify, you know, how do you plan your route? We're not talking about a weekend trip, right? So we're, what we're talking about is a month, two month, three month, full-time living, whatever it is. Five travel months. across the globe. Of course, you can't travel across the, across the globe in an RV. There aren't that many ferries. But my point is, um, so how did we plan for a long-term trip? That's kind of what we're saying here. Um, so what we do and what we've learned is that we find just one main destination or two, and we don't put dates to them. We don't put times to them. We may put book one campsite. Now keep in mind, it depends on the time of year you're doing this, because sometimes you can't find a site, so you do need to plan far in advance. So the reason we're saying that we don't necessarily schedule everything to a T with the itinerary is because it can create stress. Hey, we need to be here on this date. What if there's a, a holdup? What if there's traffic? What if there's a breakdown, right. a flat tire, whatever it is? All of these things can go wrong. Things happen. And they will because Murph's, Murphy's Law is in full effect in an RV. So we just try to take it day by day. Whatever happens, we roll with it. We keep a smile. We stay positive. Because um, if you don't, then... You may not be cut out for this lifestyle. <laughs> I'll be perfectly honest. That's... You've got to be able to to stay positive. This is true. <laughs> um, and if, you know, not that moments of negativity don't creep in. They do. <laughs> but I believe it's about how long it lasts. Especially you know, if how, you find how, out. How quickly that... are you able to overcome that negativity? Especially if you find out that you're pregnant on the road. <laughs> yeah, a week into the trip. A week into our, our like, two-year plan. I think it was like a month. <laughs> a month into our... Well, I mean, we've been planning it for five years, but yes, we have this two-year plan to see every state in the country. Will we get it to every state? Probably not, but that's the goal. So for this trip, we had planned it for the for the winter. So we had to take into account weather and certain destination spots. So, so we kept that in mind, always checking the weather. The weather isn't always 100% accurate, but you know, it's pretty, it's pretty close. And you need to check the weather frequently. 
Because keep in mind, when you check the weather for 10 days from now, it may change, right? So again, it's one of those, you got to be willing to be flexible and willing to adjust and um, be as prepared as possible, but understand you won't be prepared for everything. Um, when we started this, I could have sat on Amazon or whatever it is and just sat on the internet and bought everything possible for an RV under every situation. And then I quickly realized, hey, we need to save some of this money for our living in an RV and touring the country. Which brings us to another um, point is also your budget. Know your budget. There are very expensive RV sites to free RV sites. And free meaning boondocking. And if you don't know what boondocking, that is staying off the grid dry yep. camping essentially so you have no electricity no water no septic this is a great concept i think for couples with no kids um but for like us i've got to go out there every night we have a what is it code <laughs> code gray or code blue i don't know whatever it is gray tank we just all of a sudden yell gray tank and at this point all of our kids except for the littles Everybody knows how to pull the gray tank. So right. that happens pretty much daily. Um, so for us to be off the grid with no septic, um, it can be troublesome. Especially and when it you... is a no-no. You can't just dump your gray water wherever. No. Um, you will get fined heavily, and it's it's not nice to nature. It's gross. You know, there's a big rule in camping. Leave a site better than when you got there. Um, so when we go somewhere, we try to pick up trash before we leave, if there is any trash. But my point is... Don't dump your gray tank anywhere. Please don't dump your black tank yeah. anywhere except. So, for the people the that don't know what gray tank and black tank is, a gray tank is basically your water from the sinks, like and your dish, shower. dish water, shower water. Mm -hmm. And your black tank is their toilet water and everything else that goes in that toilet and the, water. And the bathroom sink. And the bathroom sink yeah. and whatever else is in that bathroom sink. So, but black tank is a big no no. And you're probably wondering, well, how do they do that? For boondocking, that's like a whole nother video that well, we can share later. Well, the way you do it is conservation. Some people get very creative. I've seen posts, there are a lot of five gallon buckets involved. Yes, tubs uh, in the sink, you wash dishes with the water that you have in your tank. So we have a holding tank. So you wash the dishes in a tub in your sink and you use that sink, that water, that waste water to flush your toilets is mm -hmm. essentially what people do. Yeah. So. There you go. Or they brush their teeth outside. Some people will shower outdoors. Um, or if there's a boondocking space or a state park. Some state parks do not have water available. They might just have electricity. So the water, um, the they have showers usually available there. Sometimes. Not always. It depends. It also depends on the time of year after Yellowstone Yellowstone had full hookups right mm -hmm. and then after Yellowstone we went we also had a state park booked in Montana that was close to on the lake that your that his um, aunt and uncle live so they didn't have they have what do they call them vault toilets basically it's just yeah it's an outhouse man a glorified they, they try to church, you know give these nice names and fancy names vault it's toilets. an outhouse okay? vault toilet a porta potty. It's an outhouse that can go to different places. Well, and we were really lucky that the laundry facility, not the one on site, but the laundry facility in town had really clean showers. So we just took showers there. Ryan being the cheapo that he is, did not pay the dollar twenty five to take to take his Look it up, there's a difference. Frugal man that he is did not pay the dollar twenty five to take his showers. So he just waited till we got to his aunt and uncle's. Or for a ra <laughs> a rain store to go. Hey, I was not in the service. I don't know. I thank you all service members for what you did for our country. But I've heard many of stories of people being out on a tour and doing baby wipe baths for days, yeah. for weeks. Um, and that's so what... the fact that I didn't pay for a shower, which kills me, um, which in essence, I guess you always pay for a shower because you got to pay for the water. Somebody does. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I was fine. It had only been a day. That's right? that state park was beautiful too. It was was it Finley Point on Lake Flathead. Lake Flathead is gorgeous. Um, it's a gorgeous lake in Montana. Yeah. And that was our after Yellowstone. So 
our some of our key points in traveling we also wanted to visit the new england coast uh what is the national park it's in maine um, starts with an a it starts with an a not a k is it acadia arcadia Sounds right. yeah um we didn't make it up there because of the weather yeah. so we were kind of forced to, to start going down south sooner than we would have liked but we started later in the season one it's good to start later in the season because there's less crowds Mm -hmm. Yellowstone was still crowded, and it was um, about to be off season. It wasn't September. bad though, because no, it was pretty. We good. could find parking everywhere we went, and if you've been there, or if you haven't been there, the parking lots at the different sites are not very big. They can maybe hold fifty cars max. Um, some of them are less, so we didn't have a problem. And I've heard of lines you having to wait three hours just to see one site. Um, you know, probably equivalent to Disney World, something like that. Um, so. It was nice if you can, and the reason being because kids go back to school and people don't do as much vacations. There's many vacations during the, the fall. So the fact that we homeschool makes us more versatile in that aspect. So, yeah. yeah. It, and it's good to go without crowds. I was super nervous because they they don't have rails. Essentially, they do have some in some places, but some of the, it's a active volcano underneath there. And some of the beautiful blue crystal clear water is about a hundred and how many degrees? It's about 200 degrees. About 200 yeah, degrees. Close to it. I mean, it's just below boiling. So I was nervous that we could cook a kid if they accidentally got pushed off um, with they crowds. Really hurt them pretty bad. Oh, yeah. goodness. So, and so we were I don't glad. know who's going to jump in. Hopefully there'd be a stick around. But <laughs> point is, there's no railing. It's just kind of a, yeah. a, a dock so. that kind of, not a dock, but a, um, a walkway that goes out over these boiling pits nicholas was in about in our um on our back like on in a sling and we had a death grip on nora me and madeline knew to stay away but still with crowds you can get bumped pretty easily so we were kind of yeah. ex happy that it wasn't crowded so in montana that was another stop because his aunt and uncle have a house on lake flathead which was really nice we stayed about a week with them and it was good to have these respites and also these stops where we could kind of clear out stuff out of our RV, mm -hmm. reorganize, resettle, um, take a shower, a shower with good water pressure and um, just stretch out a little bit. Another thing about planning your route is you want to know where you're going relative to what you're driving. So if you've got, if you're pulling a huge fifth wheel, that's, you know, 13 and a half feet tall. Ours is only 12 feet, two inches tall. 13 and a half feet is pretty tall. There are a lot of bridges in this great country that are very low, under 13 feet. So you've got to be very careful with that. You've got to make sure you don't get in any situations. I was talking to one gentleman and he was literally had to stop in the middle of a road in a busy downtown area because he come across, he came across a bridge that was too low. So he was backing up in the middle of traffic so he could take the exit. Um, and yeah. good thing he had the presence of mind where he stopped. If he wouldn't have been paying attention, he would have ripped off every air conditioner on top of his RV. Yeah. <laughs> so it can be a bad situation. Um, so you've got to plan your route in that aspect. There are apps that are specifically for RVs that are for truckers, um, that are GPS apps. That'll tell you which roads are safe and which are not. For example, in the Northeast, some of those bridges, they're like arched. And so right here, you're good in the very center. You're not driving in the center of the road because there's two lanes of traffic. So as they arch down, they get smaller and they get shorter. And I approached one that said 10 feet. And if you're from there, you probably know that 10 feet on the edge. I didn't. I thought the dang thing was going to be 10 feet in the middle and I was freaking out. And our what's our height? Our 11? Uh, 11 12 feet. 2. Oh. <laughs> but it was. It was 10 feet on the very side. On the, on the Don't try. End of the arch. Like, you know beside the shoulder uh, so we were fine so i would like come up on them and i'd wait for the car to pass and i'd get in the middle <laughs> and go through uh, that was that was pretty tough that was pretty nerve-wracking yeah we were probably the only time i was really nervous yeah a little anxious driving this a little nervous but we so we also plan for um for those areas right we try to stay in campgrounds a little bit farther from the city because once you get closer to cities like New York and Boston, it's where these are older cities. So they have very low bridges. 
we do campgrounds a little bit far out. Um, also availability when it hits a certain time of the year, usually after Labor Day, well, not after Labor Day, probably October, campgrounds in the north start to shut down because they have to turn off water. And some are open, but then they, they don't have water. Eyes. They have a winter eye. And it usually happens at the end of September, as early as at the end of September in some places. And um, also knowing if you can stay a length of time helps because you can stay for cheaper if you stay for a week, a month, etc. And um, there's a child at the door. Oh, another, maybe you're asking, how do you plan your route with four kids? Because we can't even shoot a 15 minute video without interruptions. Um, sometimes it involves late nights in bed talking about this stuff. So, and usually when we take those notes, we've got to go back and revise them the next day because we're tired. Um, but you just, you want to be mindful of your rig and the size. For example, we were when we were in South Dakota and Rush, Mount Rushmore country. I mean, a lot of those, some of those tunnels are are dug through the rocks. One of them was like eight feet wide and nine feet tall. Oh. And yeah. don't let that deter you because there's signs everywhere and people know. And you know, the, you just talk to the locals really where oh, you're yes, at. Hey, look, sure. you know, this is what we're driving. People at the parks are extremely helpful. Especially they campground are. hosts. They're very knowledgeable about the yes. area, sites, to see if you're planning on visiting something like on the way out. So you're going to take your whole rig when you're on the way out. They'll advise you to make sure you don't take this certain direction because of, what is it, the needle eye. It's basically, uh, you know, I don't know. If, there was some art yeah, there. There's just two yeah, rocks. Some and one was just like, I mean, just very thin. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.